and welcome back to the Introvert Circus. I'm Sassy Brass. This is Sirius. Today we're going to be doing a training tutorial that was requested in my coaching group, Tricks in the City, on Facebook. Same name as one of my training books. I know. And the requested video was if I could show how I teach backup as a cue. I teach backup in a variety of ways. There's kind of, in my mind, four main ways to teach it. And I'm going to quickly cover all of those today. You can absolutely teach it any of these ways, depending on your particular dog and how you would like to teach it, how you think your dog will be most comfortable learning it. So backup is a cue that is super useful in life if you need to maneuver your dog out of a space, especially those of us with very big dogs, that can be very helpful. It's also a really great foundation skill for a variety of sports, including tricks, rally obedience, just all kinds of sports. I know when it teaches rear end awareness, which is something, if you've been around our channel for a while, you know that we talk a lot about. It's also one of those skills that came in really handy if your dog ever gets injured and ends up in physical therapy, which we have done a ton of PT with her after her knee surgeries because it's one of those skills that is used um, by a variety of PT therapists to build muscles for our dogs. Uh, so it was useful in that regard that she already knew the behavior. So let's get started for how I teach back up. Again, there's a lot of ways to do it. I think we're gonna have some treats. Kind of the classic way that a lot of people teach back up. And excuse my setup today, uh, this is kind of the best open spot I have where I am right now, uh, is by moving into their dog, good, and marking individual foot movements. Uh, some people don't want to teach it this way because they don't want to be putting spatial pressure on their dog. That's completely fair. Uh, it's not the way that I tend to teach it anymore, but it's certainly the way I taught it like 20 years ago. Um, and depending on your dog, good. They may or may not be particularly concerned about that spatial pressure. My dog is not at all concerned about that, but it is understandable that it's not necessarily how we always want to teach it, but we're not like kneeing our dog. We are just gently walking into their space yes, and marking and rewarding as they move backwards. With any type of, regardless of how we teach back up, what we want to do is we want to really thin slice this behavior and try to mark, try to set you up so you can really see her feet. We want to mark any movement backwards with the feet, which is going to just kind of be a little bit of a shuffle at first. Any of that movement is what we want to be marking before we're not trying to get them to go a very long distance at first. These small movements good, is what is going to help them connect. Oh, you want me to move backwards, which is not something our dogs probably do a whole lot in their life. So it's harder to capture that behavior without creating scenarios for it. So that is one way to teach it. Another way to teach it, which also relies on spatial pressure, is to either sitting or standing, drop a treat, between your legs, a little bit behind you. Yes. And then as your dog backs up because of the spatial pressure after they get the treat, you can mark and reward as your dog's feet move backwards. So they're gonna back up, yes. Good girl. As she's backing up to get the treat. Back. Good. And then you can start to add in your verbal cue of choice, like back or beep or whatever you want your backup cue to be. So that is another way to teach it that also, it involves spatial, some amount of spatial pressure because your dog is going to get the treat and then they are backing up to be able to see what you're doing and because they are in a position where you are kind of like hunched over them. Again, this is something if your dog is nervous about somebody looming over them or leaning over them, probably not the way you wanna teach it, but if you have a dog who is super pushy about your space, like my girl is, she's not at all bothered by that spatial pressure. Yes. So then again, you're just initially capturing it and then over time you can start to add in your cue of choice. You can also teach back up with a target. If your dog has a really strong rear foot target, uh, you can ask them to, good, she's not, this is not her favorite target, Matt. I know, can you feet? Feet. Good. You can ask them to rear foot target the mat and then slowly increase their distance from it if you have a dog who will back up to find their rear foot target. Uh, that is a way to do it. A lot of people with herding dogs, a lot of people who do a lot of agility do teach it that way. It's not how I tend to teach it. Um, the way I do have an agility background. The way that I often will teach 
back up. And the fourth way is by luring. This is particularly helpful if you have a dog who is super jazzed about luring and who has a lot of experience with it, is I will teach it with a lure, but I will teach it with my dog at my side. I know you know what we're doing. Instead of walking into my dog, so it's not about using that spatial pressure. Instead, it's just about a lure. So I have a treat that my dog is excited about right on their nose. And I'm gonna slowly, yes, move back and click and or mark uh, a foot movement. It's really helpful if you have a mirror or to be recording yourself so you can see those rear foot movements and capture them, yes, capture them right away. She's a little shuffly. Some of that is about this floor. I do prefer to do it on a floor with more traction. This is just where I have the best light to film today. So I like to lure back, yes. Good girl. And then you can slowly start to build by adding in more steps, the better your dog gets. But when we first start, we really want to just capture that single movement. So when your dog under starts to understand that what we're doing and they start to anticipate that movement, you can add in your verbal cue of choice. I use back. Good. And then you can start to add in multiple steps. Again, this is not the floor I would like to do this on, but it, it's where my light's best. I'd like to do it on a floor that has some traction, but we're not moving at speed. She's comfortable with this. Good girl. So once you have taught it, regardless of how you teach it, um, she learned it via, I think she learned it via luring, mostly then you can start to change the position your dog is in. So I teach it outside. Um, I taught it on her left for rally, but you can teach it, I mean, she knows it on any position. Then you start to just move positions with it. Good. And practice it again. We're starting to reward it in small increments. We're not looking for them to go far, far distances. Good girl. And we're kind of in a weird spot here. She doesn't have a lot of room to go without running into the tripod. But that is the basics for how I teach back up. The key really is thin slicing this behavior. I know you really want to orbit. The key is thin slicing this behavior. Good. In order to just when we're starting, reward a single foot movement backwards. So your dog's able to make the connection that what you're looking for is that back foot movement. If, if you're luring backwards, or you find that your dog is running into things or is starting to curve or run into things, you can use environmental um, barriers like a wall or a couch, back of a couch, whatever you have to just kind of create a space where your dog is in a bit of a channel to keep them moving straight. And that can be very, very helpful as well. Let me know if how you taught back up, if you've taught your dog to back up. Uh, how you use backup. I definitely use backup to move her out of the kitchen if I'm cooking or doing anything in there and she is in the way and needs to move, I will back her out of that space. Uh, I use it in when we are out doing things um, on walks and things. If it's kind of a tight space, it's like, all right, we're gonna back out of this. And some of that's just about moving a giant dog through space, but it is a really helpful cue. Let me know if your dog knows it, how you taught it. If you're going to teach it to your dog, let me know which of these approaches worked best. You can also use a combination of them. She was taught definitely with a combination, um, for her back cue, mostly though, um, with, yeah, the treat dropped behind my legs as well as luring, um, but you can teach it any of these ways. And I'm sure there are definitely other ways if I stop to think about it that you could teach back up. But those are the four main ways that I like to teach it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know um, again how you taught it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and let me know if you have any requests for other training tutorials you would like to see. I hope that you are having fun with your dogs and we will see you again in another video very soon. Bye.